Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over the rifle that you see in my hands right here and that you guys saw throughout the intro. This is the Stag Arms Retro Rifle. Now, uh, they call it a retro rifle. That's not my term. That is the actual model designation. I don't like it. Uh, first off, uh, the reason I don't like it is because it makes it seem like 20 inch ARs are kind of a thing of the past and not relevant today. I totally disagree with that. Uh, 20 inch ARs are awesome. If you want to do any dis long distance shooting uh, with the 5.56 caliber, uh, the 20 inch just makes it very enjoyable, very uh, shootable. It just has almost no recoil. It has less blast. And of course, you're going to get better velocity downrange, which translates, of course, to more hits, uh, bucks the wind better, those sorts of things. So uh, while the 16 inch is not going anywhere, and I definitely think there's still a place for it, I think the 20 inch is still relevant today as well. So that's my little soapbox there. <laughs> so how did I get into this review? So long story short, about two years ago, I was at the Stag booth at, I believe, the NRA show. And they had this rifle here. It wasn't called the Retro at the time. It was basically the exact same rifle that you guys see here, um, but it had just a phosphate barrel. So no noise shredding, no chrome lining. And I was talking to the guys there and I was like, man, if you guys made one of those at the prices you guys are offering these rifles at uh, with either, you know, a nitrate barrel or a chrome line barrel, I think they'd really sell pretty darn well. And uh, they're like, think so? And I was like, yes, absolutely. So um, I have no idea if that conversation influenced what we have here. Uh, but about a year ago, they actually did change it. Now this has a chrome line barrel in there, um, which we're going to get into in great detail here in just a second. But before we get into all the details of the rifle, uh, we're going to let the dogs take a look at it, make sure it's good to go, and then step out to the range and do an accuracy test with it and see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this rifle. We're going to test the accuracy of the rifle now, at least as it comes. There's no aftermarket trigger or anything in there, no different hand guards. Um, we have a scope mounted on there, of course. It is the Primary Arms 1-8 to Platinum. This, I believe, is the Griffin, yep, Griffin Mill. Um, so if that's not out yet, it'll be out soon. Awesome, awesome scope, but really, really good glass. So it's not an issue at all. Um, clearly seeing the target down there at 100 yards. So we have a few different loads to run through it. And I should also mention the scope is sitting in a Geisley mount, so it ain't going anywhere. Uh, first up is gonna be the um, Federal. This is their 73, 73 rather grain burger bullet. It's a 223 chambering. And uh, we'll see how this barrel likes it. It's a heavy barrel, one to eight twist, uh, chrome line barrel. So we shall see. And just a reminder for those that are new here, because I always get this comment in the comment section, um, I'm not going for bullseye shooting, I'm going for groups. So I will usually pick a corner somewhere, aim small, miss small kind of thing. So if it's not impacting exactly where, you know, on the bullseye, that's why. It's okay. That's not what we're testing. We're testing how accurate the rifle is. So, or consistent rather. Next up will be the uh, Winchester. This one, again, is a 223 chambering. It's gonna be in 69 grain with the Match King hollow point boat tail load in there. And uh, we'll see how we can do with this one. I made a little, little shade here, but it's still hot out here. My glasses are fogging up a good bit, so push through it. Looks good from here. One thing I'll tell you for sure, you know, I do these tests a lot. Uh, it's kind of part of the part of the gig here. And the AR trigger for a fighting rifle trigger is a good trigger, but for a match gun, it is not a good trigger. So um, trigger definitely makes a difference, but you know, we got to work with what we got. And the AR trigger is definitely not bad. There are way worse triggers out there, FALs and stuff like that, uh, for match shooting. So scars. Um, anyway, up next is going to be the uh, Gorilla Ammunition. This is a 77 grainer, a 223 chambering with this year Match King Bullet. This is going to be the heaviest one we're going to put through it, and actually the last one. So we'll see how it likes this one. If 
tell you, whenever you got a good group going, there's like pressure on that last shot. Anyway, let's go check them out. We opened up with that 73 grain uh, load there with the burger bullets. And like I said, there's all this pressure on that last one. I threw that last one. I think it was me, but it doesn't matter. We count them here. Uh, with that one there, it's right an inch and a half center to center. Without it, obviously, it's about a half inch. Uh, then we came over here at the Winchester 69 grainers. We're definitely sub MOA on this one for sure. And we're right about that one. The largest area there is about three quarters of an inch. Then we came down here with the uh, Gorilla load. That's just silly. I mean, how do you measure it, right? Uh, it's... It's definitely smaller than a half an inch center to center. It's maybe three eighths of an inch in terms of a five shop group. So uh, the next time you're on an internet forum and somebody says chrome wine barrels can't shoot, uh, just ignore that person because they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, you guys saw here with a mil spec trigger, non free floated, uh, and an eight power scope, we were able to get these groups. So no doubt chrome wine barrels can shoot. And this is one of them. Now that we've seen how well the rifle shoots, we'll check out the details that go into that. So out here on the muzzle end, we do have our A2 uh, muzzle device. Basically, it's a combination of a flash hider sort of uh, compensator, but really kind of leans more towards the flash hiding. It has these uh, slits there all around the top that do allow for the uh, mitigation of flash, and since it doesn't have any on the bottom, it also helps a little bit in the muzzle rise, and the solid bottom also prevents dirt from kicking up, which certainly is good. Great uh, muzzle device for the money, one of the best ones out there still to this day, in my opinion. Now, the barrel itself, as you guys can see here, is a heavy profile, so it's an H-bar barrel, um, 4140 steel. It's chrome-lined, and it's a 1 and 8 twist, and uh, a lot of folks out there, you know, kind of are going to want to go with the 4150. That's fine. That's understandable. If you guys watch my AR-15 barrel material guide, I kind of lean that way as well. However, However, I think it's not super important as long as it's chrome lined or nitrided. This one, of course, has the chrome lining. It has our phosphate finish out there on the outside. And as you guys saw, shot really well. Uh, one thing that's really good about Stag Complete Rifles is that they come with an infinite shot barrel guarantee. So if you ever shoot your barrel out for whatever reason, um, they will replace it uh, with a brand new one. Now, I can't imagine how many rounds it would take to uh, shoot one of these barrels out. Of course, a uh, firing cycle and stuff like that would come into play but it's, it would conservatively be probably 15,000 rounds or more. So um, I would say you can expect a pretty good barrel life out of this sucker. On the actual front sight here, of course, we do have our bayonet lug. If you guys want to mount a bayonet and really make a gun grabber mad, um, please go ahead and do so. Post pictures on IG and Facebook just to infuriate them even more. Um, and then we do have our F-marked front sight block here. Um, so mil spec in terms of that regard along those lines. We also have our heat shielded hand guards that come with it. Uh, again, mil spec in that regard. And of course, we have a rifle and gas system with that 20 inch barrel. Continuing on back, both the upper and lower receiver are made out of 7075 T6 aluminum with a Type 3 hard anodizing, so mil spec in every regard. On the lower there, we do have an enhanced flared magwell, which I do like. I say that in pretty much every AR video. These days, 2018 and beyond, every AR should have an enhanced magwell. There's simply no reason not to do it. You don't lose any strength, and it just aids in reloads, which certainly is nice as well. Our upper receiver here does have a drive thumb lubricant in there when you get it in, so it's most back in that regard. Uh, charging handle, standard A3 charging handle, so you can take it off. You guys can see I marked mine there uh, for when we put it on before we put the scope on there. But we have the uh, adjustability for elevation as well as windage here, and we have the dual aperture, both the kind of wide open for CQB style aperture or night shooting, um, and then the uh, precision one there if you want a little bit finer sight picture as you're throwing rounds down range. We do have a Ford Assist, which I do like. It makes me happy. We have a shell deflector on there as well. And you do have M4 feed ramps cut into there. And uh, other than that, everything's pretty standard. We have our A2 grip on there. And the trigger, mil spec in that regard, breaks right on five pounds, nothing fancy. Uh, standard AR trigger. The charging handle the rifle comes with is a standard 7075 T6 aluminum mil spec one. You guys can see we have some wear marks on there. I've noted that before in previous AR videos. Um, basically, when it starts to happen, it seems to stop kind of where it is. So I don't really think it's an issue at all. It's just something I've noticed uh, over the years reviewing Air 15. Some of them have it, some don't. No clue as to why that is. Uh, no rhyme or reason there. The bolt itself is made out of 158 carpenter steel. 
Everything I've read says it is MP tested. I do not know if it's HP tested or not. If it is, it's not publicized. It's also shot peened. And then here on our extractor, we do have the O-ring insert, as you guys can see, as well as the black insert. And I believe that's a four coil spring in there. Um, we do have our shrouded firing pin, full auto carrier, as you guys can see here, it's made out of 8620 steel. Both the uh, inside here where the bolt rides as well as the gas key is chrome lined. So, you know, mill spec in that regard, we have pretty good staking on there as well. Uh, metal on metal, which is exactly what you want. So that's the bolt carrier. Before moving on to the stock, one thing I wanted to point out is that the lower here does have a tensioning device. So you guys can see it, that little green thing sticking out there. What that is, is it's a way that you can adjust the upper and lower tension. Uh, so that way your upper and lower fit will always be tight. So uh, basically, if you want to do that, you just remove your grip and tighten it up through there to where your upper and lower fit nice and snug. At this point, I have not adjusted mine. They're very snug as they come, but over time they can become loose. Um, so if that's the case, it has that feature in there to keep it nice and snug. I know a lot of people do like that. Um, our stock here is a standard A2 stock, nothing fancy going on. Um, A2 stocks for a lot of folks are awesome uh, when shooting from the prone position, but for a lot of folks when standing up or you know inside a building or something like that, uh, can be a little bit longer than they like, particularly if they're wearing body armor. Uh, now it's totally doable. You know, look at the Marines in Fallujah. You'll see a lot of photos of uh, guys using these length socks with body armor and using it quite effectively. It may be suboptimal in that regard, but for a rifle that you want to do a lot of like long range or precision shooting with, hunting, stuff like that, I think the A2 for most folks is a very good, very comfortable length. Uh, we have our sling swivel down here, and uh, we do have a trap door on the butt stock. So uh, a lot of A2 stocks that you see out there on the market these days don't have that, so they're not really true A2 stocks. And good on stag, I think, for keeping this one true, if I can actually open it there. There we go. And uh, you guys can take a look in there. Nothing in there, unfortunately. There's no cool stuff that comes with it, but if you guys want to put a cleaning kit, um, maybe you know some optics, some batteries rather for your optics, whatever the case may be in there, a uh, spare bolt, People get creative with these things. If you guys want to stick that in there and close it up, you can do so and uh, keep it with your rifle at all times. We've covered the specs. You guys have seen the accuracy. The big point that you want to probably know about now is going to be reliability. So we've had zero malfunctions of any kind with this uh, rifle with any ammo we fed it. Um, majority of it's been M193 from LAX ammo and it's eaten it all and gobbled it up through about 1200 rounds at this point. So you can't do any better than that. I know some folks out there when I posted some clips on this of, uh, on IG rather on Instagram, people were saying that it was uh, ejecting a little bit to the front and thinking it might be overgassed. I don't feel it from the shooter's perspective. It feels just like every other 20 inch AR. So I think it might just be kind of the way the rifle ejects brass. No biggie in that regard, as long as it runs and it does run. So next big thing to discuss, of course, is gonna be price. Uh, I think the list price over on Stag's site, if you check these out, is like $899. And then they also offer a left-handed version. For those that don't know that, Stag offers all of their stuff in left hand as well. So if you freaks out there, you're in luck. Uh, the left-handed version though, generally is about 20 to $40 more. Um, depending on how you set it up. Now, uh, Stag also has sales on these pretty often. And if you guys are watching this as this video is actually being debuted, like the day or two, uh, I think it's on sale right now. So you guys will be able to catch it. Uh, and generally they're gonna be 675, 680, something like that on sale. And that's for the complete rifle. Comes with a 20 round magazine, comes with a rifle case as well. And uh, again, infinite shot, barrel guarantee, lifetime warranty on everything on the rifle. Um, so you're getting a pretty good price point there. I think the left hander version, again, is like a couple bucks more. And then also, if you guys live in a banned state, Stag will actually configure the rifle for whatever freedom hating state that you guys tend to live in. So if you guys live in like California or something like that, they will configure it to be California legal for you if they can. I know every state is different and laws are always changing, but they give you that option in the drop down menu, which I really do like. So they're really just trying to get arms in the hands of everyone, even those stuck behind enemy lines. And I respect that. So that's pretty much it guys. If you have any questions about the rifle, by all means, please ask down below in the comment section. You can also ask over at my Facebook page. Again, I'll drop links for this rifle uh, where you guys can pick it up in the comment section. If it's not there, like IE you're watching on YouTube and I can't do that, I will link you to a video that does have the links in it, if that makes sense. From what I understand, that's okay. So uh, that's pretty much it guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I hope to see all of you in the next video.